Please kneel, everyone. Please join in singing O Salutaris Ostia, the second to last page in your worship aid, or number 669 in your hymnal. Please be seated, everyone. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. 
For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. So before our blessed Lord in the sacrament that is before us on this altar, just wanted to say a few words on this, the last official event for this weekend that we are celebrating here, not just in St. Elizabeth Church, but in the deanery of the city for all 10 parishes who have prayed and worked together to make this event happen. This is the final official moment of what we have been through these past two days. And I first want to thank those here who came to church this afternoon to mark the official conclusion of the holy hours that we have spent together. Thank you for being here and for all those who are praying on our social media platform at the exact same time as well. Young Carlo loved technology and he used technology and faith to create miracles. And so we can still do that in many ways with the gift of the media, social media and technology to evangelize the people of God. And so that's what we're doing this afternoon as we use the gift of faith and the gift that God have given to us to make his presence known. We began at 8.15 yesterday and so many people, hundreds, have gathered and walked across this property to adore the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, something that I'm sure would make Blessed Carlo very happy when he was alive among us, and he is definitely joyful as he is in God's presence as a blessed among us and in heaven. You all have heard his call these past two days, but it was a call that Carlo reached out to months before we all gathered here yesterday, to a group of women, the Columbiettes, who had a vision of bringing Carlo to this church and to this city. And she and they and many others have worked very hard these past weeks to make it happen and to bring Dr. Bill and his wife Mary, who love Carlo so much, and preach his message and share his relic with all of you. And so Bill and Mary, thank you so much for coming all the way from Pittsburgh and every other weekend you are somewhere else. And in your medical retirement, you have taken on a spiritual journey that has helped so many and we are deeply appreciative of what you have done. We've learned a lot about a 15 year old young man and there are many young people in this church tonight we read the second reading from today's Mass. Deacon Ken read it again. How unsearchable are God's ways. We know God acts, we have felt that, but just never know where God will act or how or why and where and when. And so God chose a young man named Carlo Acutis, just a normal teenager, but blessed with the great gift of faith that he did not throw away that he did not just put on a shelf, but a gift that God gave him, he engaged it totally. And that's what makes it work. Not just that we're given something, but that we're willing to give it to others. That's how evangelization works. And so if you and I have been inspired by the time before the Blessed Sacrament, it's now time to take that message forward. With the relic of Carlo Acutis here, we feel his humanness as well as his spiritual life that is deep and has been inspiring. And now we must take that forward. 
And so as I said at all the masses, I want to say one more time so that we hear it. Pray for a miracle. He needs a miracle to become a saint. We don't know when, where, how, or why God's going to let that happen, but we're kind of sure that he will, and we hope that he will. So pray for a miracle. My prayer for my miracle is that Carlo Acutis will bless St. Elizabeth School to help us through his inspiration and his direct guidance to keep a 115-year-old legacy alive, to make it stronger and to bring us into the future. We have a great school, an elementary school and a high school that is strong and moving forward, and our doors will always be open. We would like to educate your children on this hill and in this legacy and with the Benedictine tradition and spirituality. We are here for your children to give them a sound education. My prayer to Carlo is, Carlo, hold our school in your hand and close to your heart and make us even better and stronger than we are right now. We have an opportunity to offer the great gift of St. E's to our diocese and to the surrounding areas. And so I will ask that every day, and we will honor Carlo in that school, especially with the statue that was presented to us from Angels Crossing this morning. It will be an image that will inspire us. So pray for your miracle. We have Carlo here. We have John Paul II here. He lived under John Paul II's papacy and was inspired by him. And so we put these two relics together, like a father and a son. The father spoke, the son heard through a human voice of John Paul. A father spoke and a son heard. God the father spoke to Carlo and he heard that deeply. And so what an honor it has been to spend these two days together. We conversed outside, we prayed inside, we processed the Holy Eucharist, we reverenced the Holy Eucharist, and now it's time to bring it to an official close. And only when it closes can it begin, the true mission, not just to sit here in adoration, but to take Christ forward into the world, from our hearts through our hands with the power of God. God's ways are unknowable. You have no idea the people that you will influence and affect by what you say and do when you leave this church today and when we leave this time of prayer on this hill and in this church. So as pastor, I thank you so much and so deeply. I'm honored to have Father Dillingham here, former pastor of this parish. Father, thank you for being here. We deeply appreciate that. And you know this church intimately. And Father Evers is here as well. He, we and I live in the house together, he and I. And he also went to school here. And so this is your parish as well. To have two priests with us is awesome. And Deacon Bob, you're here too, and we appreciate your presence with us, and uh, Deacon Ken as well. So we will now continue our prayer and our adoration. Safe journey home, and it is blessed. It has been a blessed time to be with you and to spend these hours together in prayer. Deacon Ken, get the incense, okay. And now we will pray the Tanto Mergo.
and together we pray the divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be Jesus Christ, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the blood of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception, blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be most, ch ch most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. At this time, if um, Jenny would please come forward with the petitions that you have all written in these past two days and we'll present them to the altar as we prepare to leave. has a booklet that they can offer me. You have given them bread from heaven, having all sweetness within it. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Please join in singing, Holy God, we praise thy name, found in the back cover of your worship aid or your hymnal.